Hi, I'm Amy Smith, uh, Sales Strategy Nerd. I'm here with Prosper today on the Online Prosperity Show. We're going to be talking about how you can align your sales to your ideal customer so it makes your sales process a lot smoother and you'll end up building better relationships. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the Sales Strategy Nerd Amy herself. Amy, how are you doing, my love? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, viewers, if you're doing anything in business, you would know that sales is the lifeblood of your business. And having customers that are completely aligned to your values, to your authenticity, and to the way you actually do business will constitute them working, um, you know, and giving you repeated sales or business, which then means your business is going to be profitable and you will actually enjoy working in it. So half of the time, we always bring in experts within their own realm. And today we've brought you, um, you know, Amy, who is working um, with the Aligned Tribe. Is that right? That's right, yeah. Absolutely. The Aligned Tribe that is designed to help you be in alignment, be in alignment with your sales process up until you get the customer and take them through a customer journey that is not hold, hold, help, holding them hostage or mm -hmm. ha having them go through hoops um, and purchasing things that they don't actually want, right? So we really want our customers to be happy with our business. We want to be profitable doing that and actually enjoy the process. So obviously I could go on and on, Amy, talking about this whole alignment and authenticity part, but I'll let the nerd herself, you know, chip in and let us know how you actually operate. Tell us a little bit about your business and what got you started um, with wanting to, um, you know, align sales processes with customers and business owners. Yeah. Well, um, it's interesting because, I mean, sales, I've, I've got a sales and HR background, so I've always sort of worked in the corporate space, um, you know, working from anyone from sort of senior executives, you know, right through to, to casual staff as well. And, you know, it's really, you know, I've seen all levels of business and all different ways of doing business as well. So for me, it's sort of bringing it back to basics and really actually getting that genuine connection with the people that you're actually working with. So for me, sales is always, always about finding a match, you know, perhaps that's sort of my recruitment background coming into play there. But I really sort of, you know, believe that if you're sort of aligned and you've got the same values and you've got something of value to offer someone else, then, you know, if you're, you're credible and you're willing to, to help them and they understand exactly how they can help you as well in a non sort of salesy, sleazy way, if you can come together and, and make a match, then, you know, that's, that's really, you know, the best way to, to go about it. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Because obviously, once you're aligned to your audience or the people that are going to be purchasing from you, you literally get their attention. Because if people's values are not aligned with what you've got to say, you've already lost them, um, you know, before you've even started. So what sort of things should business people um, worry about mainly um, whenever they go out there to search for maybe their niche or an audience mm. that they should literally bring about um, you know before the customers start paying attention to them yeah so who you're not trying to work with is just as important as who you're actually trying to attract and work with as well so you're looking at you know who is your ideal client who actually lights you up who do you really enjoy spending time with you know who do you sort of match with on an energetic level that sort of you know brings you into that positive space as well um, and who are the people, you know, you, everyone's got those really awful, I call them low level clients that you just don't want to deal with. So who are you not trying to attract to your business as well? So, you know, if you've got people, you know, that are quite needy, take up all of your time as well, you know, don't value your worth and, and what you're able to provide as well. You want to have a really easy way for them to actually deselect themselves out of the process. So it's even not about you saying, you know, look, we're not a match to work together. If people hear it coming from themselves, like that's the truth. So if you're able to sort of speak to others in a way in terms of, you know, the people that you're not trying to attract, get them to understand that it's not a match. And then the people that you are able to attract, speak their language, make sure that you they feel understood. You can connect with them on an emotional level as well. You know, sales can be quite logical and tactical and it's all about, you know, getting the business in. 
but you know you've really got to understand the thoughts and the feelings of what your potential clients actually going through so you can understand them on a deeper level they like you they trust you and they want to work with you absolutely you're absolutely right about that because people do business with those they know like and trust and you really brought out something that is actually important um i remember reading somewhere where Michelangelo, when he was asked why he always comes out with the best statues, he said mm -hmm. that I just get a stone and then take off the parts that are not needed. And then the statue <laughs> wow. is, is left in, in there. So I'm supposing yeah. that this is what you're actually illustrating to say that the statue is within that big, um, you know, rock. All you got to do is take out the parts that, um, you know, are not needed because at the end of the day, there's some niches or there's some people that are not going to pay you in the first place because they just right. aren't, you know, not um, in that capacity. So it is very good to actually sift through the noise and figure out, um, um, you know, who is the client that is actually got the right pain and the payoff that aligns with you. So that's, that's a pretty um, good yeah. and valid point there. Now, what sort of frustration would a business owner um, go through if they are not in alignment with the, their sales process or with their customers? Yeah, I mean, the, the time is huge. So there's a lot of wasted time, you know, people having, you know, everyone says, oh, let's just meet for coffee and talk about ways that we can help each other. And then, you know, you go have coffee, have a really nice conversation. You're taking yourself away from the business, thinking that this is a new opportunity that's going to open up some doors for you. You know, you might be giving them huge amounts of value and everything in that conversation and they walk away from it saying, thanks so much, it's been really helpful, but they're not willing to open up their wallet and actually work with you. So it's a huge, huge time waster. And the thing is, if you're able to speak to people, you know, upfront in a way that attracts the right people and insert your credibility, whether that be through your blog posts, this is sort of going down the marketing realm of things, but you know, whether that be through your blog post, the language that you use on your website, everything as well. I mean, it'll sift out the ones, like we said, that, you know, aren't a right fit. So you're actually talking to the people that are. And when you're talking to people as well, you know, it's that intentional process of, you know, being able to move them through a process. Most people I know in business, it's just helpful leather. You're trying to just go on with your day and, and get through as much as you can. And there's not a real stringent sort of process around things sometimes. So you know, the follow-ups, you know, can take up so much of your time. Um, and it's just, you know, it, it really is the, the time and the wasted money and effort and, you know, even doing things that you don't really enjoy doing. I mean, sales is not everyone's cup of tea. So I'm sure, you know, most people would prefer to actually be delivering and adding value to their clients and customers, you know, on the back end more so than following up random people. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, that's, a, that's very true right there, uh, Amy, because what you're talking about is what a lot of business people are going through. You know, you did mention a couple of tools there, a blog and, mm -hmm. you know, a bit of follow up. So maybe, um, you know, later on, we might be asking you what sort of tools would you recommend, um, you know, for, for, for the people to be in line with. But a lot of business people don't follow up. Um, you know, when maybe they send one email and they think that's it, everybody has seen it, you know, because, it's, um, you know, their back end tells them it's been open and, and et cetera, et cetera. What is, what sort of value um, is there in a follow up? And um, mm -hmm. should you continuously do this, um, even if, you know, you don't get the, the repeated um, responses from your, from your audience? Um, because that's the reason why a lot of people don't, don't do the follow up. Yeah. So, yeah. Follow-up is super important in sales. I mean, a, a majority of your sales will come from your follow-up attempts as well. You're not ever going to get everyone on the first attempt when you're speaking to them. So some people have their own process and, and different ways of, of going through and life gets in the way sometimes as well. So follow-up is absolutely crucial as well. So you want to be able to have number one, a date and a time that you're able to follow up with that person and also a reason to follow up as well. So that actually there's something of value and there's something in it for them to actually pick up the call, actually sort of follow up from your other conversation to sort of say, all right, well, you know, now let's talk about next steps and how that might work. So rather than just sort of saying, let's just follow up in a few weeks time, make it really intentional, put a date on it, put a time on it, get their commitment, put it in their calendar, and, you know, say in the next conversation, we're going to discuss, you know, this in terms of 
that next strategy that we spoke about and, and how we can move forward with that. So, you know, it's giving something of value to them. There's something in it for them. So, you know, they'll want to take your call. Absolutely. Well, as you would know, um, Amy, our customers like buying stuff, but they don't like being sold to. Every time you go in to buy or in a shopping mall, you walk into a shop and then the assistant says, uh, yeah, can I help you today? You're like, no, I'm just browsing. And then automatically maybe you walk away. So what sort of tools would you encourage um, business owners to utilize, especially in the follow-up space? Um, you know, sometimes you want to do it automatically or sometimes you want to be reminded that you have to follow up on Sally because you had this conversation. You can't keep on top of everyone and what their needs and specific um, you know, uh, stage in the in the customer journey they might be. Is there any tools you can recommend? Yeah, so there's lots of different, um, I guess, CRM systems. If you're a big organization, you know, there's um, systems like Salesforce, Infusionsoft, um, Omniport, all different sort of things that actually help to sort of automate that process. So, you know, what could be of value for someone, you know, in terms of the next steps for you? So perhaps it might be a video sequence that is able to educate them a little bit more about what you spoke about and help them maybe to even implement some of the tools and strategies that you spoke about in your initial conversation so that, you know, when you actually speak again, you've, you've got something to talk about. You know, it might even be, you know, a webinar or something like that as well that you can invite them to that, again, you know, really engages them, brings a group of people in together as well. So you're not having to be stuck in that one-to-one -one sort of sales dynamic as well. Um, so there's a few different strategies that you could use. Absolutely. Well, you did mention that, you know, when you're in alignment, there's authenticity, there's trust, you know, there's, you know, bringing the tribe together and how I also reiterated and say people do business with those they know, like, and trust. Now, when it comes to automating all these processes in the customer's journey, does that not take away the authenticity, um, you know, of the business? So maybe you, you then start utilizing a messenger chat board or any of these um, you know, instant sort of, um, I mean, automated sort of um, tools that you've just mentioned there. Does that not strip off, you know, me coming across as a business owner that's authentic? Mm, that's a really good point, actually. And, you know, it, it's all about being human. So if you're able to communicate in a human way, whether it be through an email, whether it be through video, I mean, video is great because you can get your personality across in that as well. And it's really quite time efficient, you know, for the business owner. You know, it is about speaking their language. So really understanding whether you've got people, you know, that you can actually use the language of your, your customer. You know them well. You understand their fears and their frustrations. So you're able to sort of talk to that through, through what you're saying. Absolutely. And I hope in the process that also leads to building relationships. Definitely How important... So yeah. Yeah. I mean, some people's view is, you know, you kind of get to the point where you just, you take their money and then that's it. That's the sale that you've won. You, you know, I hate that word, you know, I've won the sale. It's just like, oh, gross. Close the but, sale. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's, um, you know, for me, it's the start, you know, you actually, how you get people into your business actually sets up for, you know, how they expect you to work with them moving forward as well. So if they have an awful crappy experience when they're coming through your sales process, they're going to, you know, even if they do sort of end up, you know, working with you, their expectations are set up that it's going to be maybe a pretty crappy process. And I mean, excuse my language, but it's just, it's just, you know, how it works sometimes. But if you're, you know, able to sort of build that relationship early on and carry that right through, you're already three quarters of the way when you start working with them and you're going to get results quicker for them as well, especially, you know, if you're a coach or a consultant, you know, you, having that relationship just means you can, you can work on a deeper level and you're going to get the results. All right. So obviously you, 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 you're bringing in valid points that marry each other somehow. Um, you know, us as um, entrepreneurs, we don't really care or value the opinion of other people. And mm. that usually comes in the form of customer testimonials or customer reviews. How important yeah. are those, um, you know, in the relationships that we're creating with our customers to make sure either, you know, we, 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 we validate those or we just totally, you know, ignore them because they don't know how we run our process and they probably are just, 
having a bad day and they just go online and write whatever review. How important is, is it to actually monitor that, um, you know, uh, part of, of a sales process? Yeah, I think, you know, people are people and when you're, you're working on a larger scale, you're not going to be able to please everyone. So that's probably something to keep in mind as well. And it's really about how you react and how you deal with that situation. So, you know, if it is a bad, you know, way, you'd, you'd want to make sure that, you know, you're engaging with them, you're on the front foot. And I mean, that's more your sort of customer service side of things as well. But, you know, you, with the sort of sales, great testimonials are, are just vital for your sales process as well. You know, it helps to actually eliminate a lot of the objections that people have when they might be coming to you as well. So if you've got someone else that, you know, you can see, you know, they might have been a little sceptical at the start of working with you, but then they're able to work with you and, and they can see that the results that they achieve. If you've got someone else that's also might be feeling a little sceptical about working with you and they read that, you know, it, it's going to help them sort of move through that challenge a little bit and be a bit more receptive and open to what you have to say. Um, so they're really important, but it is just monitoring it and making sure that, you know, you're really engaging with the people and it is about building those relationships. And, you know, if there is anything bad, I mean, it happens, it's business, but it's about how you deal with it and how you turn it around as well. Absolutely. So just let us know, it's the beginning of the year, 2018. What are we yeah. to expect from the sales strategy nerd? <laughs> Yeah, well, it's good. I'll be involved in a few workshops um, that are happening throughout the year, um, speaking um, at a Young Entrepreneurs event and everything that's happening about June. Um, I'm working with clients at the moment one-on-one, -on -one, but I'll be moving towards some group coaching and things like that as well. So lots to come. It'll be very exciting. Absolutely. And um, obviously, while we've got you um, and still in the swing of things of happening in 2018, some people might have just started their business or they're going into year two or they're going into year three. And we all know statistically that 95% of businesses don't make it till year number five. What sort of advice can you, um, you know, give uh, to those that are in the under five year bracket to mm. not become a statistic and be actually aligned with their sales process and the people they're going to be demanding money off of? Yeah, I think it's really connecting um, with yourself as well and why you got into business in the first place. Like that's what's going to drive you through the tough times as well. Business isn't meant to be easy. If it was, you know, everyone would be doing it. I've heard that quite a bit. So, you know, it is about, you know, making sure you've got a really clear vision and mission of what you want. You've got high integrity in what you do as well. Um, and you're building those relationships as well to support you so that you've, you've got a network around you as well. Um, one of the key things for me has been surrounding myself with some great mentors that have been, you know, quite a few steps ahead of me in their journeys. And that's, you know, people that you can connect with on a, on a deeper level and also sort of learn from their mistakes and, and sort of help you push through as well. So, yeah, I, I'd say just, you know, trusting and believing in your, yourself and your vision and connecting with like-minded people as well. Absolutely. Well, this has been fantastic. We've learned quite a lot. And the biggest, um, you know, um, a thing that I was hearing from um, what you're putting out there is we're here to leave, we're here to learn, and we're here to contribute. And the more we contribute, the more value we put out there, that's, you know, is, is how we get paid, um, you know, in the marketplace. So this has been a pleasure, you know, chatting with you. And thank you so much for the value that you've dropped on this show. And if you're watching this episode right now, please do make sure that you subscribe so that you're not going to be missing out on all this information that will help you be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And if you're going to be um, wanting to connect with the sales strategy net, I'm going to be putting in details of her website and um, profile if you're going to be on the Australian Business Online Directory. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you so much there, Amy, for your time today. Thanks, Prosper. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.